Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett, and today is the fifth and final episode of Saving Money with Lumber. Now before I get into it, um, I have had a couple of inquiries from people wondering if I would be available to come to their wood guild and give a, a course or a demonstration or something. And yes, I would, um, but rather than me talk about it here, uh, for anybody who's interested, you can read about it at the bottom of the article, uh, and the link is in your description box. Let's get into wood once you get it home. Okay, so let's talk a minute about different man-made products. Now the one that I have on top here, if you've been watching my videos, uh, you've watched me use some of this uh, melamine. There's two versions of this. There is the melamine which I've used and there's also a plastic coated which is this one. Now this stuff is ideal for making things like kitchen cabinets, for shelving, uh, things like that. For getting more into things like furniture making, uh, we like to go on to a more natural wood and of course everybody will be familiar with plywood um, and products like MDF and MDF is just a compressed kind of, uh, of wood and like anything there's pros and cons to them. The nice thing with MDF materials, uh, MDF materials are, are nice and flat They're, and they remain flat. That's the nice part of it and you know there's a couple of versions of this now. You can get a lighter version of it, lighter in weight. Uh, you can also get a moisture resistant version which is very nice. Now the nice thing with a, an MDF is because it's so flat it's perfect for doing kinds of veneering things and this is a fairly inexpensive kind of wood to purchase but then you can purchase veneers, very thin veneers and they come in what we call a flitch. Basically what you can do is you can glue these together and, and then glue them onto the MDF material and what happens is you get an absolutely flat perfect piece of board to work with and for the edges um, you can do a couple of things. You can purchase uh, this kind of banding material and it's already pre-glued so you can glue it on there with just a household iron and it sticks great. It works really well. What I like to do is cut thin strips of wood and I'll actually glue the wood on there first of all then put the veneer on top and you know what when you get finished you can't even tell that it's not a natural wood and it's a great way of making things like furniture tops uh, that you want to have absolutely level. Let's talk about veneers for a second. One of the secrets <laughs> that a lot of people use um, for making some really amazing furniture. This veneer that I get is from a company called Oakwood Veneers. I'll put the link in the article on Woodwork Web. You'll be able to go and check them out. They make, do an amazing job of making veneers. So that just really shows you the difference where you get a man-made product that comes in like a big sheet like that. These woods here I purchased from a veneer specialist. They cut them and they're raw like this. You have to then join them. Uh, so they're a little bit harder to work with, um, but you can get some amazing results by working with just little pieces of wood like this and some man-made materials. Let's have a look at plywood for a second now. So this is what they call a cabinet grade plywood. Now you can get plywood in all sorts of grades. You can get it in construction grade and you can get it as high as a cabinet grade. And for this, it's just a better quality. Um, there's less voids or no voids in there and it's usually nice and flat. You can use this as a direct material for building uh, cabinets or many many woodworking projects. For finishing the edges on plywood typically we use something like this, a, 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 the same kind of thing that I just showed you for the, the MDF material. Um, I prefer to use little wooden strips even on plywood. I can cut them and sand them and get them so that you can't tell the difference between the plywood and the edge. And it saves you a lot of money because all you're buying now is just the veneer that's already been glued and prepared on there. Uh, you just need to make sure that you're getting good quality cuts and <laughs> you don't make mistakes when you cut the boards. Um, but you can make a lot of lovely furniture with plywood that's already been pre-veneered. Well let's talk now about natural woods and as I'm holding this wood in my hand here I'm, I'm torn as to whether it's a manufactured or <laughs> 
whether it's natural. It's actually natural wood. This is pine, but it's laminated pine. And laminated wood is very strong. It's stronger than natural wood because the glue joints are actually stronger than the wood. And you can buy this stuff. I use this from time to time uh, for lots of different little projects. It's, it's nice and flat, easy to work with. It's already dimensioned. So there's some good reasons for using something like this. But you know, as woodworkers, we always try and use natural wood. That's just what we like to do. What I'm going to do here today, I'm going to go through some of these boards here and just give you some ideas because when you get boards home, there's always defects in them. And the question is, how do I cut around the defects to get the most out of the wood? And I'm going to show you some ideas that you can use. This is a piece of holly, and someday I'm going to have to cut into it. But in the meantime, I just love this wood because it is so warped. You can see that at one end, when it's flat here, how twisted it is at the other end. I've learned things the hard way in woodworking. One of the things I learned the hard way is that when you have a board that's warped, Warped, maybe not even as warped as this one. Uh, rather than trying to make the entire board warp, what we want to do in an ideal world is cut this board into lengths that are going to be project sizes because that's going to save you a lot more wood. So for example, if I were to try and straighten this entire board, even if I were to try and straighten it from here to the end, I would end up with a board that's about this thick because as I ran it through the planer to get it flat um, it would actually have to get narrower it is so warped so what we do instead is when we find a board that's warped like this we try and find the area where they are flat for example this one is quite flat from here to here so what I would do I would find the project see if this length fit that project then I would cut it here and here rough cutting it cutting it longer than I needed and that way I can cut just this length and now I could actually get a three quarter inch thick piece of wood out of that. So now rather than trying to plane the whole thing and ending up <laughs> with a half inch or, or, or a quarter inch board, now I can actually get some usable lumber. When you get wood, rather than trying to cut it or plane it to size when you first get it, cutting it to rough length might be the best thing you can do to preserve a width, especially if it's warped. Now sometimes you'll buy wood that may be a little bit on the damp side when you bought it and it was straight and flat when you bought it and by the time you get it home and get around to using it maybe a few weeks or even months after and you'll find that it's warped. Uh, and there's not a lot that you can do with it except doing what I said and that is taking the flattest parts and recutting that and piecing together what you can. There's no magic way of unwarping wood. Now when we look at wood, you need to determine whether some of the defects in it you want to implement into your work. For example, I like to put knots in some of the projects that I make, but the knots need to be small and they need to be in such a way that they're not going to fall out. But in a lot of cases, I need to cut around different defects. And I'm just gonna mark this board because it's a rough cut board. And I've shown you this one before. Remember, this is the one with the crack in the top, developed a crack in the top. What I might have done would be to just cut that off right there and now I've got a much shorter board and just throw this out as waste. Now you could still do that but remember we looked at that crack up there and I can show you that because I've trimmed that, how that crack goes diagonally. In a case like this what I would probably rather do to get more material is I would actually take this board and run that board all the way down to there and you can see I've got another crack here. So that would be the wood I would probably cut out of that. So that gives me a nice long straight flat board with no defects because there's nothing. It's nice and flat straight on that side. Then on the other side, now I've got this. Now on the other side, I could still do that. Although that's a small knot, I might want to incorporate that. But now on the other side, I could do the same thing. And now, if I want, I could cut that out. So I've got that board and I've got that board. I might be able to cut that off. So there's some more good wood. So all I've lost is this and this, which is not so bad. And when we get to the bottom of it, 
Now you can see that there's a, a knot there. This is one of those nasty knots. Some knots are cut sideways, so they take up a lot of room. So I would probably cut that off like that. And there's another knot down there, but there's some wood in there. Maybe a line like that will give you another. There's some other good wood in here, and there's some good wood in there. Um, not so much in there, but, but certainly in there. So that's how I would cut that board to get the most usable lumber. Now we move along to the next one. This is a very nasty board. And the reason it's a nasty board, there's a big knot in here, but it's one of these knots that's got all sorts of irregular grain in it. And it's hard to do anything with them. I would probably cut that board about there and there. Just get rid of that. It's going every which way. It's going to be hard to finish. It's going to be hard to sand. It's going to be a very difficult board to use. I probably would, if I'd had a choice, I probably wouldn't have brought that home. But when I flip it up, you'll notice that I've got some, uh, there's some chipping out here, or I guess there probably was bark here at one time. So that's a big defect, but I'm not worried about that because this is a, a full width board. If I joint the back, then I can plane the front so I can actually joint all of that roughness off and I'll still get a very good straight flat board. Some good, some very good lumber in there for this area right in here. The last board that I have is some locust uh, and it's a very thick, this is what we call eight quarter it, because it's two inches wide and it's got some, some nasty problems with it. It has another one of these big nasty knots here that kind of go everywhere. But depending on what the project is that I might be using, I might actually try and keep that in there because this would be a nice feature. I would, uh, depending if this was like a coffee table or something, I might split this in half and then do a, a, a book matching of it. So bring it out like this so this whole thing becomes a center. If that's not what I'm going to do, I would probably cut that board off right about there. And up in here, there's not much going on. A little bit up in here that you might be able to use for maybe some boxes or something small. But this area here, uh, because there's rot and so on, um, it's not going to be good for much unless it incorporates the rest of this as well uh, to give it structure because the structure here will be pretty weak with all the rot. And eventually you'll come to the point where the wood has been thickness to what you want um, and it's cut rough to length. You've maybe jointed the edges and glued it up like this one. Um, and this one's kind of all ready to go. Now I cut this one long as I always do now because I knew there was a little defect up here but what happened with this one, what showed up after the fact, and sometimes these happen, there's a crack that showed up down here, which I don't want to incorporate into the project. And I'm going to show you two things that you can do to fix this. The first thing is if you've got enough room, you can cut that off there. But here's a little trick that crack goes all the way through. What I can do with a full kerf ripping blade is actually rip that entire board all the way along there and it'll give me a nice if I use something like the the Freud glue line rip I'll get a perfect cut I can take that wood off and glue it back on and you know what the colors the same the grain is the same it'll match with a good gluing you won't even be able to tell that there's a piece of wood in there and it gets rid of that crack but it also makes the wood even stronger because it's a laminated glued up board now or, or more glued up so that's a little trick that you can do that saves having to redo this whole board now I've also incorporated a little knot in here uh, it's also cracked a little bit but it's still a nice tight knot so I would just fill that with a tiny bit of epoxy and that will fix that up and keep that nice and firm but that's all you need to do make sure that the last thing you do is to cut it to length so always leave a little bit of extra wood on both ends and remember what I talked about when you buy wood buy 20 or 25 percent more than what you think you're going to use and that's because things like this can happen where you may end up with having to cut a board off or cut around something because wood moves and cracks and does things that we don't always like so lots of things you can do to preserve the wood and get good results. Well, that concludes my video on and, and completes the series on saving money on lumber. And this episode is far from complete, but what it does do is it gives you a snippet into some of the things that you can do and gives you some options so that you can make the best choices you can with the lumber that you have. 
I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.